We have DA reporter Katie Ann McCarver in the newsroom to give us an update on the Iowa Board of Regents. And also in the newsroom, Kaylin Clough reporting on UI Culture. The Iowa women basketball team has a huge matchup tonight. We'll hear from them in sports. We had our first major snowstorm of the season. I'll break down when the next snowstorm is scheduled to come. Stay tuned for weather. All that and more coming up on this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to this Thursday morning edition of DITV. I'm Susanna Kloster. And I'm Samantha Ostwick. The University of Iowa's Student Disability Services sits at the bottom of a flight of stairs and one group is looking to change that. In a petition to move SDS, UI Student Disability Advocacy Awareness has received just shy of 2,900 signatures in a month urging UI administration to relocate SDS from its home of 30 years. And it seems that their voice has been heard. UI Media Director Ann Bessett said in a statement, various groups of UI government and administration are, quote, engaged in very early conversations about the potential co-location of student disability services, university counseling services, and student health and wellness, end quote. The aim of UISDAA is to see relocation completed by 2020. It may be easy to forget that university, university life isn't just made up of undergraduates. So we have Daily Iowan reporter Katie Ann McCarver in the Daily Iowan newsroom to discuss COGS. Good morning, Katie Ann. Good morning. So tell us, what exactly is COGS? COGS is the campaign to organize graduate students. It was originally established in 1996 and recently underwent a recertification election. And what do they have to do to be recertified? Right, so they had to uh, take a vote from all the members about whether or not to remain in existence for the next two years um, due to a 2017 state law. And what does that law cover? It also determines what's on the table for contract negotiations. So both the Board of Regents and COGS need to agree uh, whether or not something is worth debating. So what covered in this year's proposal comes from COGS? Right, and COG's contract proposal, they basically asked for the restoration of language, uh, which was taken out due to that 2017 state law, and in a couple of weeks, the Board of Regents will uh, come up with their counterproposal. Thank you, Katie Ann. Thank you. University of Iowa Vice President for Medical Affairs and Dean of Harvard College of Medicine, Brooks Jackson, hosted what he called a town hall Wednesday evening to discuss the strengths and challenges of the path ahead for UI healthcare. One point of note Jackson covered were UI students. Um, speaking of the students, so while we do uh, have excellent students, we are still challenged to get some of the brightest Iowa students because we don't have scholarship money. For a full rundown of the meeting, check dailyiowan.com for more. So we can see some of the snow is starting to melt finally, but it looks like we're going to have another, another system come through this weekend. Yeah, I can't believe it. Let's toss it over to Dylan in the weather studio to tell us more. Thanks, guys. You're honestly completely right. The snow is still covering the ground and making it difficult to walk around all of Iowa City. Now that 8 to 10 inches that came down here last week will be accompanied by some more snow to come. Now, as you can see over, over, over here, right by Iowa, um, the snowstorm is supposed to come around Sunday, so it will be exactly a week from the previous one. Now, as we look into today's forecast, our temperature is 29 degrees and cloudy. As we move into tonight, we will have 30 degree temperatures with partly cloudy skies and some freezing drizzles coming around around 10 p.m. tonight. Now, as we move into the extended forecast for this next week, we have some sunny skies tomorrow with a high of 35 degrees and a low of 31 degrees. Saturday, the rain comes. We have a 100% chance of showers with a high of 40 degrees and a low in the mid-30s. Sunday, that rain will continue in the morning, but not, not for the rest of the day. Our high is 38 degrees with a low of 26. Monday brings partly cloudy skies with a high in the mid-30s and a low in the low 20s, so our lowest low of the week. 
until we get to Tuesday, where we have our coldest temperatures with cloudy skies, a high of 27 degrees, and a low in the high teens. Well, that's all I got here in the weather studio today. But be on the lookout for that snow this weekend and that rain coming on Saturday and into Sunday morning. Samantha. Susanna and Samantha, back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Dylan. Well, some Iowa City trees will be getting their shots next year. The emerald ash borer threatens some 3,500 ash trees in Iowa City. As the name suggests, ash borer tunnel through ash trees, making ash dangerous to keep up. The Iowa City Council, however, is looking to fight back, giving the go-ahead on incestides on 140 ashes in Iowa City parks. The, the incestus is administrated by an injection, reducing runoff to neighborhood, neighboring plants in some local water systems. The Iowa Department of Natural Resources says the goal isn't to kill the boar, but rather preserve Iowa City's biodiversity. A new student organization on the University of Iowa campus is using art to raise awareness for a complex cause. DITV arts and culture reporter Kaylin Cluck is back in the newsroom this week to tell us more. Kaylin. Good morning, guys. Yes, this week I had the opportunity to attend a very unique fashion show held by IC Red. They're a new student organization hosting a jam-packed week of events in order to educate the public on HIV AIDS. I attended their fashion show exhibition on Tuesday night in order to see how they combined art with raising awareness. Take a look. The winding walkways at the Visual Arts Building provided the perfect platform for a fashion show, but this event was about much more than the clothes. Models, all wearing red, had their faces painted with numbers representing a statistic about HIV AIDS. We just wanted to show that no matter your background, you could come together to talk about HIV and AIDS, and that's why we tried to kind of have like diverse models, diverse styles. There is still no cure for this disease that attacks the body's immune system. The statistics were on their cheeks. An example of one of them was one in seven, because one in seven people don't know they have HIV. Various campus organizations have been trying to raise awareness and end the stigma surrounding HIV AIDS for a decade. An IC Red formed this year with this specific goal. I mean, there are 2,000 people in Iowa living with it alone right now. The fashion show event also featured the BFA art exhibition of UI student Gilbert Phelps. I'm really happy with the turnout especially with IC Red Week and the fashion show. It brought a lot of people into the art building. Among his eclectic mix of sculptures, paintings, and drawings, one piece, the tripong table, was particularly fun for event participants to interact with. It's meant to operate somewhere in between like sculpture and recreation. Uh, it was meant to be played on. It feels great just like knowing that people are willing to collaborate with an artist and combine fashion with the other parts of the visual art world. But the sculptures and runway action all had a deeper purpose in the context of the event, where art and expression are used as gateways to open a discussion about difficult health conditions. Not everyone understands science. Some people just aren't science-minded, and that's cool, that's awesome, but because of that, a lot of people feel like they can't talk about it. So it's kind of like seeing, oh, they're all wearing red. Why are they wearing red? It's just kind of making it more accessible to people. Now, this was just one event that was part of IC Red Week. There's also educational panels, film screenings, a mirage. But then their big event is tomorrow on the Pentecrest, where from sunrise to sunset, they, it hold the reading of the names, where they try to read through over 100,000 names of people who have died from HIV, AIDS, and other related diseases. And for more information on supporting IC Red and their events, you can visit their Facebook page. Guys, back to you in the studio. As always, we have some great arts and culture in Iowa City, and we also have some great basketball, both men's and women's. But the other night, um, Gary Dolphin, a popular Hawkeye sports reporter, was suspended for two games because of his comments. Yeah, I heard about that. Let's toss it over to Taylor Van Fleet in our sports studio to give us that story. That's right, ladies. Hawkeye men's basketball play-by-play -play commentator Gary Dolphin was given a two-game suspension for his comments made in last Tuesday's game, but he did issue a public apology, and he should be back on the call uh, next week for the Iowa State game. But let's transition into women's basketball news. The team is currently ranked 14th in the country, and on Thursday, they will have their toughest task of the season as they travel to South Bend to take on the number one team in the country, Notre Dame. Two seniors leading this Hawkeye team understand the big matchup and what it could potentially mean for the program. 
they're playing UConn on Sunday, and so um, they might be overlooking us, and that's going to be an opportunity for us. You know, I really think it is, and so I think we're going to go into it um, really excited, and we're we're gonna I think we're gonna catch them by surprise. They probably will double. I mean, I mean you know, I got to be ready for anything, and so um, I think that they're they're obviously a really good defensive team, and so it'll be a challenge, but I'm up for it. Um, if we win, obviously it'll shake up uh, women's basketball, and you know that's something that we will obviously like to do. But you know, if we don't win. Um, we just want to go out there with our heads hang, hung high and just knowing and saying that, hey, we gave it our all and we limited our turnovers. We boxed out. We did everything that we could possibly do. That should be a great matchup tonight for the Hawks. And the Cy Hawks series continues as Iowa Wrestling will host Iowa State this weekend. Wrestling beat reporter John Rawson has a preview of the meet. John, what do you have for us? Well, Iowa Wrestling is in the middle of what might be called a crisis after losing Michael Kemmer for the rest of the season. However, they have to put that aside and focus on the meet this Saturday at 2 against Iowa State and Carver Hawkeye Arena. Head coach Tom Brands has been trying to keep the focus on going forward. Yeah, and I think in the statement, Michael Kemmer, um, the quote from him represents what he's about. He's about going forward. And that's what we're about. We're getting ready for Iowa State at 2 o'clock on Saturday. The match to watch is at 133 pounds, where Iowa's Austin DeSanto will face Austin Gomez, who is in the top 20. This will be the biggest crowd he has wrestled in front of, and he should do well at feeding off the energy. DeSanto is 4-0, including a pin in the home opener versus Princeton. But to him, this meet is just like any other. I mean, just another, another day to me, but... I mean, I like to wrestle, and I like hard matches, and I like those hard environments, so I, I'm excited. There are a few spots in the lineup that are left undecided for Saturday, one of them being Jacob Warner. If he gets to wear the Iowa singlet for the first time, he will face opposing 197-pounder, fifth-ranked Willie Meekless. And at 149, if Pat Lugo is sent to the mat, he'll have a throwdown with State's Jarrett Deegan, who is ranked in the top 15. There are plenty of question marks in the Hawkeye lineup, and if Iowa Stars get the green light, this meet could be a fun one. Back to you in the studio. Fans can watch the action on BTN Plus, as well as get live updates from Iowa Wrestling's social media. And come back tomorrow for this year's first installment of Courtside. Guys at the desk, back to you. Thank you for tuning in to this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news. And if that isn't enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out the print edition on the newsstands now. For DITV, I'm Samantha Ostwick. And I'm Susanna Kloster. Have a great day, Iowa City.